Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. I am going to do another reading from the Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, conducted December 20th, 1994, United States Department of Energy, Office of Human Radiation Experiments, June of 1995. I wonder if we still have an Office of Human Radiation Experiments. There's a new subtitle. I'm going to take my glasses off because we'll see what works better in this light. I just can't stand the big heavy overhead light. Okay, so here we are, new subtitle. It's called, uh, gosh, I have to get it up so close now. The Controversy Over Low Dosage Harm. Goffman. Having gotten to know about this problem of no harmless level of radiation. I take it very seriously because I believe how this controversy settles out is important and I'm not optimistic. I'm a little more optimistic because of journalist Eileen Wellsom and Energy Secretary Hazel O'Leary. But I think the chances are pretty good that the deceptive position that radiation isn't harmful may win out by default because so much money goes into it. Boy, did you know, for real, dude. If it wins out by default, the textbooks will all be wrong. And yes, they are. Once you get this into the, in, excuse me, what is, how does he say that? Once you can get the database altered so the textbooks are wrong, there is no way you'll recover that. An army of Einsteins will not be able to fix it. So the textbooks will say, in 1992 to 1994, it was proved that low doses of radiation don't hurt you. And that's precisely what happened, folks. This is why Dr. Busby's work is so monumental, because he, re he re-studied it, he reproved it. That will open the floodgates towards, don't worry about the waste disposal because even if everybody gets 10 millirads or 100 millirads a year, it won't hurt anybody. What I see is that millions, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people are going to suffer. There, there are going to be a lot of extra cancers. There are going to be a lot of genetically deformed children. And this is exactly what we're seeing. I consider that a personal tragedy that should not be allowed to happen without trying to counter it. I feel though I don't feel too optimistic. It's essential to try. Oh, see, here's that word try. I'm telling you folks, eliminate that word from your dictionary. It's essential to try to do something to prevent that from winning out. See, if he, just, if he had rewritten this, he could have told his brain a different word. If, if he would have written, it's essential to do something to prevent that from winning out. But I'm not optimistic. I would almost say that I was never really ready to throw in the towel and just go away. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hefner, you and Alice Stewart have some similar concepts, some similar concerns. Have you corresponded with Dr. Stewart? Goffman, yes, we're good friends. I talked to her the last time about two months ago when she was at a symposium in Spokane. I was one of the invited speakers. Apparently, when they originally planned the symposium, the Hanford Health Information Network thought they were not going to have any money to have people from overseas come. They didn't invite Dr. Alice Stewart from the United Kingdom. I had an invitation to fill about three slots. I insisted that I show my CNN tape for an hour and 10 minutes. Bea Kelly arranged everything and it was all set. We were talking one day and she said, good news, we got permission to set to spend the money to get someone from overseas. We're going to invite Alice Stewart. I said, Bay, how, maybe it's B, B-E-A, I'm sorry, you guys. 
B, how are you going to invite Alice Stewart when you've got the program filled? She said, we, we checked that with Alice and she'll be happy to talk with people in the hall. And I said, B, that's nonsense. You can't do that. You don't invite Alice Stewart to come to a major meeting and not have her talk. So I said, you, you've got to do something about it, and I'd like to know about it. She didn't have an answer. Five days later, I called her up, and she said, since you haven't figured out, how, out a solution, I have. I'm going to give my speaking openings to Alice Stewart, and you can still show my videotape. That's how Alice Stewart came to that meeting. I talked with her on the phone after that. I didn't go to the meeting myself, but my videotape was shown. Apparently, it's quite popular, my videotape. I wonder what his videotape... So that's the CNN tape, an hour and ten minutes. I wonder if we could find it somewhere. Okay, so that's some homework somebody out there can do. Find his CNN tape, eh? Six minutes in, okay. No, Alice is a very fine person, and I have a lot of respect for her. I disagree with her on some of the technical points, but technical disagreements are standard. She's a good person. She's taken a lot of flack from the establishment. There are many people who don't believe her work today. I think that thing on the children in utero is correct. Oh, well, she must be the doctor who proved that it's harmful. They don't want to hear that it's harmful. The Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission originally said they didn't see this excess leukemia or cancer in the children for the first 10 years of life that were expected from Alice Stewart's work. When I wrote Radiation in Human Health in 1981, which, by the way, I have a copy. If anybody wants a copy, I have several spares that I bought that people can have. Send me a message and I'll send it to you. Um, when I wrote Radiation in Human Health in 1981, I analyzed why they might not see it. I didn't think the absence of the findings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki disproved her work. The interesting thing is that in the last few years, Yoshimoto in the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, or what's called RERF, now has analyzed the kids that were in utero and have a big excess of adult cancers. They are showing, even though they disagreed with the early effect of Alice Stewart, that 30 and 40 years later we're seeing a big excess. The children radiated in utero are as sensitive as the next group to them, zero to nine year olds, and maybe more sensitive. Wow, 30 to 40 years later. Alice Stewart made a big difference. See, Alice Stewart's work on those children in utero in 56 and the more definitive paper in 58 was the thing that broke the back of this. I'm telling you that from 1910 to 1945, people were saying 200 rads, 400 rads won't hurt anybody. Then she comes out and says one rad will give a 50% increase in cancer and leukemia. This is just a world of difference in thinking. I'm pretty hard-nosed. I don't like work that I don't respect, even though it made my point in spades. I consider it detracts from the truth and it hurts everybody. There are a lot of people who have claimed things that just aren't so. I don't admire that. That's not Alice Stewart. Hefner. Hold on. Hefner. Who's following behind you and Alice Stewart, the next wave bringing up these issues? Kaufman. I wish I knew that. I know some. There's David Rush at Tufts, who is very good. He wrote me a letter. He wrote the book with Jack Geiger called Dead Reckoning on all the on all excuse me on all the things that were wrong with the Department of Energy studies of health effects. 
David is 60 years old and he's thinking whether he should stay at Tufts in his professorship or maybe try to do something and try to pull together whatever information can come out of the ex-Soviet Union. Oh, hold on just one second, folks. My scanner just did something. And I think I should have to put my glasses on because I can't see what I'm doing. I'm clicking away and I can't really quite see what I'm clicking at. So hold on, Viz. Come on. My computer's doing something right now. Hmm. Maybe I'll just go. Shrinked it down and I'm going to get back to reading. Forget that. <laughs> okay, so whatever it's doing, I hope I don't get something bad going on there. But I'm going to keep reading. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Who's following up behind? We're super screwed. There's nobody. <laughs> David Rush at Tufts, who is very good. He just wrote a letter. He wrote the book with Jack Geiger called Dead Reckoning on all the things that are wrong with the Department of Energy studies of health effects. David is 60 years old and he's thinking of whether he should stay at Tufts in his professorship or maybe try to do something and try to pull together whatever information comes out of the ex-Soviet Union. There is Boris Gusev. I think he's in his 60s in the Soviet Union. He's the one that I was telling you that the United Method Ministry is trying to help get his material over here translated. There are not too many. Steve Wing, University of North Carolina, published a paper on Oak Ridge people. He looks pretty good. Hefner. He used to be at Argonne, didn't he? Goffman Wing? Was he? I didn't know that. Hefner, I think he might have. Goffman. I suspect there are a number of people that I don't know that don't all communicate with me. I get some nice letters from some people around the world. Hefner. Have there been politicians or certain Congress people or certain social action groups that have been more supportive of you? Goffman. Mike Gravel, who was the senator from Alaska at the time, he later lost his seat. He made a hell of a difference because he got a lot of things in the congressional report. He was friendly. He also had a so-called uh, airplane accident. That's how he died. Hmm. I wonder what he was working on. Gorley. There's a special pro. Excuse me. There's a special problem with the things that are above the Arctic Circle, isn't there? Radiation levels. Goffman. In what way? Gorley, elevated levels. Goffman, gee, I didn't even know. Gorley, okay. Goffman, part of my ignorance file. Howard Metzenbaum, a Democrat of Ohio in the Senate, has been a great friend of mine. We were in high school classmates together. He has asked me many times, what can I do in the Senate to help? I don't like to have Howard do things for me that are based on our friendship, but I have asked sometimes to put something I've written into the congressional record, a way of getting it in. He usually writes something about me. He's retiring now, but he's been there and has been willing to help. What the fuck? You had a senator and you didn't get him to fucking make these people stop? I mean, God was hitting this guy over the head. He had people begging to stop. What a dumbass. Oh, my God. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> like, really? He had a bird in the hand, and he just like, oh, whatever. I didn't really want to do it. All right, let me get back to this. He's retiring now, but he's been there, and he's been willing to help. That's about the extent of my congressional favors. From the U.S. Supreme Court, there was William Douglas, but he died, unfortunately. He was a very good friend. Oh, my God. Wow. I know this guy's dead, and I shouldn't say something about someone who's dead, but for real, what a complete dumbass. No wonder we're super screwed. Okay, let me finish reading this. Hefner, 
Any social action groups and environmental groups? <laughs> dig, dig, dig. Goffman. I have a very good working relationship. Of course you do, with the Natural Resource Defense Council. <laughs> the ones who help keep open nuclear power plants. Tom Cochran there. I told you I prepared that Belarus manual, which later became the book EDF. I don't know. Henry Kendall of the Union of Concerned Scientists was very friendly, and I think he was always saying nice things about me. I have some friends in Germany, some in Russia. I got this letter yesterday, some comments of people who got a hold of the book. One geneticist that said, that's the most beautiful piece of scientific work I've had my hands on. Hefner, this was your Chernobyl book? Goffman, I didn't think it was that good. I get letters from people who say they followed or have read what I've written. I think I have more friends out there that I don't know well, but I have a lot of people who hate my guts. <laughs> Hefner, over, all over the controversy. The controversy that he discovered that there is no safe level of radioactivity. That's the controversy. It's not controversy, it's science. Goffman, yes. And I don't have any quarrel with atomic power other than that I don't believe it's consistent with health. <laughs> I don't have an agenda, hidden agenda, except I have an agenda about health. It matters. <laughs> okay, Goffman, let's read this again. And I don't have any quarrel with atomic power other than I don't believe it's consistent with health. I don't know why they wouldn't want that to come out. Oh, my gosh. I don't have a hidden agenda, except I have an agenda about health. It matters. I'm going to stop here. I'm sorry, you guys. This is just getting too funny. No wonder we're super screwed, man. Like, really? Oh, man. Well, I'm glad I'm reading this now. <laughs> it sort of makes me spit nails, but you know what? Put your courage feet on. Uh, and I hope to live stream our symposium. So I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to make a video about that. Ciao.